Now we'll move on to look at the jejunum and the ileum. They're the sites of absorption of digested foodstuffs. Jejunum and ileum are names given to the proximal and distal parts of one continuous tube. Ileum changes gradually. It becomes narrower, thinner walled, and less vascular. The loops of jejunum ileum has an arrangement of loops. Now we'll move on to look at the jejunum and the ileum. They're the sites of absorption of digested foodstuffs. Jejunum and ileum are names given to the proximal and distal parts of one continuous tube. There's no distinct boundary between them, and they're often spoken of together as the jejuno ileum. We'll look at a dissection in which all the organs are present, with only the dependent part of the greater omentum removed. All of this seemingly haphazard arrangement of loops and coils is the jejunu ileum. To make its orientation clearer, we'll rearrange it like this. The jejunu ileum starts up here to the left of the midline. It runs downward and to the right, ending here. The jejunu ileum lies within a space that's bounded by the ascending colon to the right, the descending colon to the left, and the transverse colon and its mesentery above. Along its six meter length, the jejunu ileum changes gradually. It becomes narrower, thinner walled, and less vascular. The loops of jejunu ileum are attached to the posterior abdominal wall by this peritoneal sheet, the mesentery. Since the attachment of the mesentery to the intestine is about 30 times longer than its attachment to the body wall, the mesentery is arranged like a richly folded fan. The mesentery carries the blood vessels of the jejunu ileum and its nerves and lymphatics. The blood vessels are arranged in arcades which we can see when we hold the mesentery up to the light. Here in the proximal jejunu ileum, there's a single arcade. Here, more distally, there are multiple arcades. There's one here, another one here. The mesentery contains fat between its peritoneal layers, more so distally than proximally. We'll take the jejunu ileum out of the picture again to look at the attachment of the mesentery to the posterior abdominal wall. It begins here on the left, in front of the last part of the duodenum, and runs downwards and to the right, ending here, close to the cecum. Here's part of the jejunum that's been divided longitudinally. The mucosal lining is thrown into folds that project into the lumen. The folds are more pronounced here in the jejunum than in the ileum. Seen in close-up, the mucosal surface is a carpet of minute projections, villi, which vastly increase its absorptive surface area. The jejunum ileum ends down here. We'll remove some fat to see that better. The ileum joins the large intestine at the ileocecal valve which is here. Now we'll move on to look at the jejunum and the ileum. They're the sites of absorption of digested foodstuffs. Jejunum and ileum are names given to the proximal and distal parts of one continuous tube. There's no distinct boundary between them, and they're often spoken of together as the jejunu ileum. We'll look at a dissection in which all the organs are present, with only the dependent part of the greater omentum removed. All of this seemingly haphazard arrangement of loops and coils is the jejunu ileum. To make its orientation clearer, we'll rearrange it like this. The jejunu ileum starts up here, to the left of the midline. It runs downward and to the right, ending here. The jejunu ileum lies within a space that's bounded by the ascending colon to the right, 
the descending colon to the left, and the transverse colon and its mesentery above. Along its six meter length, the jejunu ileum changes gradually. It becomes narrower, thinner walled, and less vascular. The loops of jejunu ileum are attached to the posterior abdominal wall by this peritoneal sheet, the mesentery. Since the attachment of the mesentery to the intestine is about 30 times longer than its attachment to the body wall, the mesentery is arranged like a richly folded fan. The mesentery carries the blood vessels of the jejunu ileum and its nerves and lymphatics. The blood vessels are arranged in arcades, which we can see when we hold the mesentery up to the light. Here in the proximal jejunu ileum, there is a single arcade. Here, more distally, there are multiple arcades. There is one here, another one here. Now we'll move on to look at the large intestine, where water and electrolytes are absorbed from the intestinal contents, the contents changing from liquid to semi-solid in the process. The large intestine consists of the cecum and appendix, the colon, the rectum, and the anal canal. The cecum is a blind side passage at the beginning of the large intestine. It hangs downward in the right iliac fossa lying almost free of peritoneal attachments. Here's the appendix, sometimes called the vermiform appendix. It's a vestigial but potentially troublesome structure. It can lie in a variety of positions. This is its most usual location. Here's a dissection of the terminal ileum, cecum, and appendix that's been opened longitudinally. The ileum projects a long way into the lumen of the cecum opening at the ileocecal valve here. It's suspended by these two folds of mucosa. Despite its name and valve-like arrangements, this opening is not an effective one-way valve. The appendix opens into the cecum below the ileocecal valve. Here's its opening. To see the rest of the large intestine, we'll again take the jejunu ileum out of the picture. The colon has four named parts, ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid. Before we look at these, let's look at the features of the colon that make it different from the small intestine. Here's a typical length of colon. In the colon, the longitudinal muscle isn't continuous. It's gathered into three strips called the tinea coli. Here's one of them. Here's another. The tinea are effectively shorter than the rest of the wall of the colon. They have the effect of drawstrings, producing these bulging circulations. In many adults, these diverticulae develop over time. They're protrusions of mucosa through the muscular layer. Here's the colon on the inside. In between the outward bulges, which are called haustra, these impressive mucosal folds can divide the lumen into separate compartments when the muscle contracts strongly. Seen in close-up, the mucous membrane of the colon is smooth. There are no villi. Here's the opening to that diverticulum. Now we'll return to the dissection to follow the course of the colon.